agenda. I understand there's one agenda change adding as 7.2 a discussion prior to the joint meeting. Is that right? About the streets? Correct. Okay. Any other changes to the agenda? Additions? Deletions? Move the agenda be approved to submit it. Whatever is corrected. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Let's raise our hand. Approval of the minutes. Okay. Any comment about the amend the minutes? Do we have just how many sets of meetings do we have to approve here? Just one. All right, motion to approve the minutes for the January 23rd meeting. So move. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> no guests or speakers. No public comment. Upcoming terms ending under discussion topics. So uh, we just want to take an opportunity to remind um, some of you that your terms are coming to the end as of June 30th and that is Mr. Highsmith, Mr. Roberts, Mr. Spittle, and Mr. Linkhorn. Uh, in the case of Mr. Highsmith, Mr. Roberts, and Mr. Spittle, you were at the end of your second term so you're termed out as of June 30th and we appreciate your hard work. Uh, Mr. Linkhorn, your first term was par a partial term so you are eligible for another full term. So you're eligible to apply for another term if you so desire. I do. And we'd love to have you. So we'll notify you all or notify you uh, when, uh, when we're going to be accepting applications. Okay. Probably sometime in May, April. Yeah. April, yeah. Yes, sir. When, uh, when do we start uh, collecting retirement? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've, I've been getting here for about a year and a half, by the way. <laughs> And then, uh, just, um, just a matter of being correct, mine's listed as, as, as a six-year rather than a three-year term, that. okay? We caught that. I'm just saying that so you know that I actually read this before I got here tonight, okay? Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you didn't give me a chance to give just, her the just, opportunity. Just a matter of doing the book work, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's what <laughs> making sure you read it. That's what it was. She's testing me all the time. She threw popcorn at me to movie, too, by the way. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank, Thank you, sir. Um, Discussion about the streets prior to the joint meeting? Yeah, I, I asked for just a, a, a few minutes for a discussion from the board before we go to the larger meeting, just to kind of get some feelings, impressions, and so on, and see what everybody has so that if, if in fact, there is agreement or disagreement, whichever, that we could kind of discuss that here prior to going to the larger meeting in case there's a public forum there and so on, okay. it, it, just so that we don't end up, you know, with three to three in the planning board and that that's not very helpful for anybody so so I just ask that with, you know with no particular I have no particular agenda in mind just just a discussion uh, I went through it again <laughs> and and I have I have to say uh, from a personal standpoint I was disappointed because it looked to me like almost the same thing minus a 16 page deduction from the first time uh, and I really kind of hope that I'd really kind of hope that it would be narrowed down to from what I call a, these are the possibilities you can have in transportation, in the world of transportation, uh, to this is what we see in the town of Leland, but I didn't, I didn't see that. Uh, for example, I saw eight, eight or ten pages devoted strictly to how you can do on and off parking ramps for, for buses. Uh, but we don't have any buses in Leland, so I'm not real concerned about you know, how far we need in the curb and the build out to get a to get a city bus in there. So it's just little things like that kind of kind of got my attention more this go round than the last one. On the first one I realized it's just a broad brush and and their objective there was to show us lots of possibilities. You know of you can have streets like this, like this and this. Lots of lots of cut and paste of world of transportation uh, on four way byways with trees in the middle, but we don't have any four lane streets in Lula. So so I, I guess I'd looking for okay this is good and now we start peeling the onion down a little bit and I kind of felt like I didn't see that. So prior to going to the other meeting, I just wanted to see if what, any, what anybody else saw 
I, I, I guess my expectation was different for this go round. I thought the first time was, you know, I guess we gave it grades. I don't know. I guess I, I think I gave it a C plus or a B or something like that. But I kind of expected more this time and just didn't see what I thought was going to be in this draft. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm just throwing that up for discussion. Chuck? I mean, I think the staff worked pretty hard on putting it together. Mm -hmm. uh, I sort of have an understanding of where they came from, what they used. Sure, there's a lot of boilerplate there. Mm -hmm. They tried to pick <coughs> things that would fit the town. Mm -hmm. um, I guess if you look at it, in some ways, it's a lot more than we have now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That is, that's going to be one of the things that happened. And that's, that was my feeling, too. I mean, I didn't say that, but it was all I'm kinds sure, of possibilities. I'm not sure that's that bad. I'm not sure that's bad. Mm -hmm. I agreed with Mose at the last meeting that it definitely may be true. We may lose a few of our developers. I have no problem getting new developers in here. Mm -hmm. You know, if they don't want to build, we can get somebody else in here who can build. They just have to have the right approach. Mm -hmm. so, I, I don't overall don't have a lot of problems with the street guide. I know it's going to be more expensive. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with that. Aren't these Anybody? mainly uh, suggestions of different <coughs> ways that we can build a street? We don't have to say, well, this particular street has to be built this way. I don't think it's that manual says that. At least I might be wrong. Am I right, Gary? Or is this just say, these are different suggestions of how you can do a corner, how you can do an intersection, how you can do a street. And not so every street's going to have all that stuff. No, but it might be streets mainly like in the new Mr. Linkhorn, if you could speak into the microphone for us. Thank you. Can you hear me? That's good. Okay. What did I say? So <laughs> let me. I'm sorry. I didn't want to interrupt you. I got it all. Don't worry. No. Okay. I, I, I just think my own opinion, this is just suggestions of streets that we, different ways we can go about it. I don't think any certain street's going to be just like this particular kind of street. I don't think you're going to say a uh, connector street is going to be built like this. I don't think that manual says that. At least I didn't get it out of it. Okay, so let me just address Mr. Penwell's uh, comments first. Um, on behalf of staff, uh, putting together this manual, we were charged with <coughs> trying to arrive at every possible street design that the town of Leland at some point in time would have the need to consider. Not just for today and today's applications, but into the vision of what the future of this yeah. town may look like. That's tough. <laughs> because the last thing you want to do is have to add a section every time there's a need that doesn't fit something in yeah. the manual. So undoubtedly, there will be many cross sections that will be seldom used, may never be used, but they're there if they're needed. Um, up to now, we've been using the Department of Transportation's standards, which are no longer suitable to fit the applications in our neighborhoods and the type of neighborhoods that are unfolding in, in the town of Leland. So that's why we're taking it from the Department of Transportation standards to our own standards. In many cases, they're the same. They're, they're no different. But in many cases, they're much different, particularly in the Fluxcote district, where you've got a different context. So that leads into Mr. Linkhorn's comments, um, there's different alternative cross-sections for different contexts. So different neighborhoods, different zoning districts will have different applicable street sections. So not every street section will be used in, every, in the context of every zoning district and the context of every neighborhood. There's a lot of variables that will drive which options are most suitable. But at the end of the day, the intent would be to introduce this into our ordinance as a text amendment, as a required guideline. Gary, if I, I don't want to interrupt you, but, I, but no, you're, right. you're on my point. Uh, so I just let me ask you the question then. Sure. <clears throat> is, um, and, and I, I agree with everything you're saying. I, mean, I have no argument with any of it and, and with examples laid out, but will there be, will we, 
reached to a point in this study where it says <clears throat> we, we envision the village road to be this kind of a layout with these requirements and and Leland South, i.e. 17. Well, no, sir, because point, those are DOT be, roads. Pick it as we pick it our, as we Our can. road section, those, are t those two are DOT roads, so we have no authority over yeah. the design of those roads. Yeah. So our guidelines will not address those two specific roads. Unless you bring them into Leland. <laughs> Unless we take ownership of those roads. And Village Road isn't? No. no. Village Road and, and Highway 17 are DOT yeah, state roads. Yeah, 17, I know. Under yeah. the authority of DOT. Unfortunately. Yeah. <clears throat> and their standards. But go back to, he was saying something about a bus, uh, you know, opera, that type of transportation. I hope someday that we will have some form of mass yes, transit for, between here and, yeah. and Wilmington. I mean, you know, it just makes sense. It's got to, we might as well build it in, in, the, in the structure because someday I hope we will have some kind of mass transportation. And town council in their budget discussions leading into the 18-19 budget season uh, have talked about a bus route or an added bus route. We actually have a bus. Uh, it's a mini bus. You know, it's a van more than it is a bus. But council is very cognizant of the need for mass transportation, particularly as this town grows and has a desire to introduce a better mass transport system. So at some point, hopefully, there'll be a need to accommodate buses on our streets. Mr. Bryant, you had a comment? Yes, but when we go back and, and <coughs> you mentioned flex coal. Yes, sir. You know, we, we bought in the flex coal and just from my, just from my here, and that is not a favor in for developers, you know, uh, and now we're looking at the streets. So I guess what, what I'm trying to ask, what are we, you know, are we setting our standards too high at this particular time? Do, you, you know, because I was in a meeting a few days ago with, with some realtors, and you know, first thing come up, you know, it's hard to build in Leela. And let's look at the urgent care down there. You know, who in the world want to build a building that parents got to get out and walk from the back to the front to go in the building? So when I hear to say, well, you know, we got the flex code, now we're doing this transportation, we're doing this street thing, you know, I, I, my question is, are we setting it too high to bring developers in? It's, it's so let me address one point at a time. So with respect to the flex code, um, there's no question it's been a challenge to gain uh, support from the development community. Uh, from my vantage point, primarily because there's been lack of knowledge and understanding of that flex code. It's, it was new. It's still new. There aren't many communities, if at all, around us that have had the vision to introduce a flex code. They have in other parts of the country that are more progressive. So there's been a learning curve. There's been a learning curve for staff as well to learn that code. But I can honestly say we are beginning to see support. And obviously, we're seeing projects on the ground using the flex code. And it's been as a result of both the developers and builders working with staff closely. So we're learning it together. We're assisting their efforts so that they do learn it. We're spending an inordinate amount of time meeting with the developers around the table, helping them design their projects um, as they work through this learning curve. Um, but we're going to be seeing more projects coming out of the ground. Is it appropriate for all parts of town? Definitely not. And I think that's what we learned um, a couple years ago when we tried to rezone a parcel on Highway 17 that there's just certain parts of town that are not appropriate to, to zone flex code. But there's other parts that we believe are, uh, such as along Village Road. Um, and with respect to comments that the realtors may be making, all I can point to is the fact that our growth is off the charts. 
And if people are finding a hard time, finding it a hard time to build here, we're certainly not seeing that with numbers of permits that are coming in, with the compliments that we're receiving from builders and developers, with the cooperation we're giving them. Um, and then lastly, with respect to are we raising the bar too high? Um, you know, that's a that's not a question for staff. That's a question for council and, and the boards and committees. But I'll point to the fact that everything we're doing, including the street design manual, is consistent with the master plan vision that was adopted by this board and council. And so we, we keep track of all the elements in that master plan to ensure that all of our rezonings, all of our text amendments, all of the manuals, such as the street design manual, speak to that, that master plan. That, that drives the engine. And if there's something that takes an exception, we point that out. So there, there needs to be consistency. And if, if we feel we're heading down a path that's raising the bar too high, then it needs to go back to the master plan, because that's what set the bar high to begin with. You know, we set the bar high to say we want Leland to stand out and this is the reason why, and everything flows from there. Gary, if I can just add one sure. one thing to that. Um, so in terms of the flex code and what was taken out for this last draft, the street design guidelines are um, an effort to educate. So they're not changing the policies and what's allowed already for the flex code streets. They're giving developers cross sections so it's easier for them to understand without having to flip through the charts that look much different in our flex code. We're going ahead and putting those cross sections together for them so hopefully it's a little bit easier to understand. I guess to follow up, if when we look at, are you going to be, as from what little knowledge I have about it, when you look at the street and you want to design tight in some areas and you're flexible over here with these codes because that, that is a concern. It looks like, you know, there's some areas that no, you can't do nothing but do it the way we want it done. But over here, we'll give some. Do I make sense my question? I mean, it, it's, it's a uh, tough thing that because and, it, 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 and I go back to your statement is, you know, you say we're going off the chart. Now, you know, we're growing we cost and develop more to grow. I mean, all these, I mean. So the, I'll address the first part of that and let Gary have the second one. Okay. Um, so the flex code has a minimum and a maximum on almost all technical elements. So it is pretty flexible in my opinion. Um, what you see in the cross sections is typical, what most people would go to. But there are provisions in the design guidelines that say if you look in the flex code, you can move around a lot within this number. So it, I, I think that it is flexible, and that hasn't that's been consistent throughout our application of the flex code. So I, I think it's somewhat normal for there to be somewhat of an adversarial relationship between the developers and government because the developers want to build what they want to build the way they want to build it as cheaply as they can and it's government's responsibility to keep that from happening and and for the council and the boards to drive the ship on what we want our community to look like and with that there has to be some reasonable meeting of the minds of how to accomplish what the town wants to accomplish and not put too much of a burden on the developers and I think in that process there are likely to be developers who say we're not willing to live by the rules we want to go where we're used to be in the Wild West and playing the way we want to play without any rules and I'm okay with that go go out in the county and build something and even though they don't want to build in in the limits of Leland we're still likely to benefit from the people coming to shop and, and those kind of things. So, I mean, I think we're going to grow regardless. And I, I think I think staff's on the right track. I mean, let's plan it the way we want to plan it and be reasonable. And if they want to go somewhere else, go to Pender County, go to Pender County. I can.
can tell you right now, I'm a, I'm a uh, president of a, a HOA board, and I can tell you that vel developers don't like any rules. <laughs> they don't even like H our HOA rules, and they're trying to beat those all the time. And uh, I think you have to have rules, you have to have guidelines. And sometimes they're acting like spoiled rats. I'm sorry. Oh, well, I, oh, I'm on television. Uh, <laughs> But I think that, you know, we, we can we can give them, we don't want to drive anybody out of here, but yet uh, I think they have to have rules. I think you have to have some guidelines, and and you can be flexible, but you still have to have guidelines. I agree with you. Yes. Um, in looking at the, uh, um, the report, and I noticed uh, they still have the similar kind of the yield streets, the neighborhood street. I mean, those first three or four sections are probably the only, the only sections that the developer or the builders will ever use. They're not going to build the, the multi-highway. Uh, They're just basically doing the residential streets. And I don't think what they've sh well, what the consultant has shown here is has added a lot. I mean, they're still basically a 50-foot right-of-way, which is what they've always had. Although historically, they used to be 66, then they went to 60, and now they're 50. But what I think what what's what's drive what seems to be driving them crazy is the fact that you're going from a twenty, I think it's a twenty-seven foot pavement, to a from a to a twenty from a twenty-two to a twenty-five, in order to achieve the the yield street concept. I don't think that's. I mean, if, I guess if you measure along a lot of length of road, it probably does add up. But the reason they have that yield street is so you can park parallel park on one side of the road and, and achieve some of the uh, the objectives that I think the town has had in terms of letting emergency vehicles go through well, well there's still traffic there and um, th those are probably the only th you know the three sections that the developers have any concern about They're, they shouldn't be concerned about buses and, uh, with the road maybe uh, maybe it's the designation of where you're going to put a bike path versus not a bike path but on a, on a narrow basically a residential street I think they recommend we don't recommend bike paths <laughs> so we're not adding extra they're still working within the same limitations that they've always had so um, I think they're they're kind of spewing off about maybe just a few sections of the, of the report that, and most of it doesn't even apply to them any other discussion Any, any action we need to take? No, <laughs> no, no it's, in fact, my, my, my question was answered, and I, the purpose of my one to discuss it was if we have any differences or opinions, something we could do it here, you know, as a board, as opposed yeah. to doing it in a joint meeting, which is probably not what they've asked us to attend for. So uh, that's that's all I wanted. And right. and then going forward, and I think we all, as one thing became clear is we all kind of had some different expectations of perhaps what this report was was where we where are we on it you know and will there be more or and and that's that's what I heard because I think I was kind of looking for that product and and that may be the going forward yet till we get to that level and that's fine with me the, this is a massive massive project and and uh, these these problems are really difficult to solve because there's no one there's no one answer you know two and two anywhere and so somewhere between three and five and that's that's the problem with a study like this so it's tough thanks all right one other I, um, I just like to know what kind of dialogue has taken place between the dev developer community and the, the town to get to the the point we're at now obviously we've had a couple of months was there any meeting between them did they respond that they didn't like this or they wanted to do that or or was has it just been Nay, 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 nay. A lot of that. Uh, we're going to address that at tonight's presentation as part of our dialogue. Uh, there have been conversations we've had with the developers, uh, but I can honestly say we have not gotten any specific alternatives to what's been presented. We've had discussion about some dislikes about what they don't like about it, but they have not offered any options as a substitute for what they don't like. Now, we're hoping to have more conversations with them uh, after tonight. So tonight, 
the manual is not being presented for approval. It's just a second draft, and it'll be subject to change it one more time, hopefully no more than one more time after tonight before it goes to console and to board uh, in the form of a proposed text amendment. But so we do hope to have more conversations with the development community and hear specific options from them. But we have not received those as of yet. I have a question. How likely is it or how possible is it that the developers could actually come together and boycott building in Leland? Is that likely? Not likely at all. <laughs> there may be certain builders and developers that will prefer not to build in Leland. Okay. There will always be developers that will build in Leland. I mean, the Brunswick Forests of the world, sure. the Waterfords <coughs> of the world, the Magnolia Greens, there will be developers that, for their own benefit, will want to follow these kind of guidelines. And a developer might follow in somebody's footsteps and actually build something for a lower price. Hmm. Possibly. Okay. All right. Action item, preliminary subdivision plat submitted by Mako Road Partners. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So tonight, subdivision is for Grayson Park, Tract C. It's a preliminary subdivision plat. This parcel encompasses 17.32 acres, and the applicant is proposing a subdivision that will result in two lots. A 1.32 acre parcel where a stormwater detention pond is currently located, and then a 16 acre remaining parcel. And this is the plan that was submitted to staff. I'll use the pointer on the screen for you. So this is the stormwater pond. This is the 1.32 acre tract. And this is the remaining tract. Staff recommends that planning board approve the preliminary subdivision plat with the following condition. A final plat submitted to the planning manager for approval and signature within 18 months of town council's approval or the plat is rendered void. And that is a mistake on there. This does not go to town council. It just stops here at planning board with your decision. Be happy to answer any questions you might have. What, what's the intention of the use of the land? Just so, open space or? So currently there is a stormwater pond located on there and I believe that they would like to transfer that piece to the HOA. For maintenance. Okay. So they are doing a subdivision to make that more clear cut for them. And the, and the other larger piece, is that just nature? We have not received any plans for that at this time, so I couldn't answer that for you. Oh, right so, now. So they could come and actually put right now it's wet, uh, homes in that? Well, a lot of it's wetlands, so it's just going to depend on what they. <clears throat> I noticed that there was a lot of, you know, the different qualifications of, of wetlands. I don't know what a 404 is versus a, mm -hmm. uh, another one, but I, I, I assume there are restrictions um, for what kind of development can, that can go into that. Sure. Um, so, again, if it meets the development regulations for the town and Division of Water Quality, then they would be able to develop there. But at this time, we haven't received anything for that. Well, this is really just a subdivision to uh, principally the, to uh, Define that pond area. Yes, sir. Everything else is up in the air. Yes, sir. Does, I, it, does it say I, you can't, I can't see all that little print there? Does it have a, a builder? Is there a builder? Is this Mako Road Partners Inc. Whatever. Mako Road Partners is the owner of the land. The owner. <coughs> but we don't have a builder. No, sir. I went down this afternoon and took a look at it. It's it's kind of a no-brainer, frankly. You're just looking at nothing. There's a pond. Okay. So, do, do you have, do you have any? Was there anything in contention? The uh, concern? There was uh, not. This was very straightforward. You kind of just like, okay, it's somewhere down there. It's going over there somewhere, and then back up. That's, if I see no problem with it. Any other discussion? I hear a motion. Move to. I I move to approve the. Um, can you flip back and I'll just give you the correct wording here. <laughs> to approve the preliminary subdivision plot submitted by Maker Roads. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Carried. Any older? 
new business? Staff board and committee reports. So let me just highlight a couple of things in my report. Um, not a whole lot of new business uh, to present to you tonight. Our discussions with the Leland Town Center folks are progressing. We, we actually met with them again today. We're meeting with them, it seems, anymore two or three times a week as they continue to refine their overall de de um, development site plan. Um, the road construction, unfortunately, uh, surrounding that area on Plouffe Road has been delayed pretty significantly as a result of weather conditions. Um, they're ready for pavement right now uh, on the road extension and the traffic circle. Uh, so we're hoping to see that pavement go down in the coming two to three weeks. Uh, I've been told in the last couple days by the contractor that they hope to have the paving done in that area sometime by the middle or latter portion of March, um, weather permitting. Um, and then they will begin their last phase of work, which is going to be at the, at the intersection of Highway 17 and Plouffe. Um, there's some additional lanes being added on 17, uh, turning into Plouffe and coming out of Plouffe. And there'll be some traffic signal work there as well. And they're hoping to have all that complete by early April. Will they be able to open the circle in the, in the roads, you know, Plouffe and back that area? Yeah. Before? so that's what's anticipated to be done by the middle of March. So they'll reopen Plouffe by the middle of March. The connector road will be done. The roundabout will be in. Uh, the, the connecting road between the two Plouffes will be completed. Uh, and that, so that'll all be open up to traffic at that point. Um, Harrington Village, as you can see, the progress uh, being made out there. Um, the front two commercial apartment buildings are topped out. They're now hanging drywall on the inside. Uh, we expect to be making a, a major announcement the next day or two with a press release announcing two major tenants that will be um, going into those buildings. They've started work on the third commercial building uh, out front as well. Uh, and they're, they're pretty far along on several of the apartment buildings, deeper back into the project. And they're actually signing leases. They have a on-site leasing office in their clubhouse. And they're uh, expecting to be ready for occupancy in some of the apartment buildings as early as uh, April. Are they going to make the connection there at Fairway fairly soon? Um, that's actually based in. And um, they're waiting for the weather to cooperate to, to put the pavement down. Because yeah, it's, it's actually kind of difficult to get back into where the apartments are. <laughs> Well, right now, that's yeah. the challenge they're having. Their leasing office is only accessed from. Right, you got to go uh, through a construction. You got to wind your way in, yeah. and they're trying to position signage to direct the traffic uh, from Village Road back to the leasing office, and it's been challenging. We've been talking to them and working with them uh, to, to to find creative ways to do that. But they're having success getting leases signed. So, um, in spite of the challenges. But that road is hopefully going to be complete in the, in the next few weeks, weather permitting. How many commercial slots up front? 30,000 square feet in the three buildings, 10,000 square feet in each, uh, each building. Uh, you'll also notice Fairview has been uh, repaved back at that intersection with Baldwin. Um, and there's been a sidewalk added connecting back into the Pig of the Wiggly parking lot. So that work is pretty much wrapped up at this point. Uh, a few other things. Uh, Panera Bed, Bread is under construction finally uh, in the uh, building out front of Harris Teeter in Waterford. Uh, they have been told they expect to open sometime in April. Um, the medical office building in front of Wall um, Magnolia Greens is under construction. That is the one that came before you a month ago. Uh, for annexation of a parcel associated with the site and the, um, an update to their PUD. Uh, the last step in that annexation will take place uh, next month in March at a public hearing um, and a presentation to council. Uh, the county has given us the authority to issue the building permits while we're waiting for the annexation to occur. Uh, and uh, 
Wilmington Health will be the tenant in that building. They'll be moving their practice. They've expanded out of the new Hanover Medical Building in Brunswick Forest. Uh, they, they're in need of more space, so that they will be the ten, primary tenant for this new 20,000 square foot building. Um, Northgate Project, the, the town finally acquired the, the last remaining parcels that were necessary for right of way in the last week. So the contractor, S.T. Wooten, has been issued a notice to proceed, and we're expecting construction to start about the 1st of March. Question. Yes, On sir. the street that's coming out to Village, <clears throat> is that going to be wide in it? The street that's coming out of? Behind you. No, know, when you're coming out of Village, I mean, you're coming on to Village, with that street by the dock off, will that be wide in some? There's going to be an added lane there. Yes. Yeah. How far down into the? Um, it'll be tapered back, probably just beyond the first building. I'm trying to envision it off the drawing, just beyond the first building. Okay. That island comes out, and it'll be a fully signalized intersection, so you'll be able to turn right, turn left, or go straight. I'll make, okay. And that about wraps up my report. Yeah, I, I, yes, I think it was in Star News they talked about a merge ortho yeah. uh, building over there near close to the existing medical mm -hmm. complex, but it's made a comment that they may need a bigger site and they were looking somewhere in not in the Brunswick Forest area, but um, because um, there was a CON approved. And so their site's been identified. In fact, you approved. Uh, uh, you approved a subdivision yeah, plan last month for it, so it's going to be along Highway 17. Okay, uh, so th they're going to move to that location? Just beyond Food Lion, yeah. All right. They're taking uh, the mean uh, Lowe's. Or Lowe's, excuse yeah. me, yeah. They're taking, Merge Ortho is taking the entire space building, aren't they? Are they not? Well, they're building a 50,000, 55,000 55, square foot 000. new building. Yeah, that's yeah. And that will have a surgery center with one big. operating room and two um, procedural uh, okay. rooms and that's the CON that was issued okay well will, the, will the, uh, the site plan for that uh, be coming to the planning board for review at all or is that no that goes to TRC okay. and that's it's been submitted to TRC and we're uh, they're addressing the comments that came from TRC that doesn't come back to the planning board for approval where the radio controlled helicopter is going to fly <laughs> well it's also in that area that the senior living community will be built later this year with the independent living, assisted living, and skilled nursing care. Um, that We expect that to get underway later in 2018. We're going to put a wheelchair cart to connect the canal. <laughs> there you go. All right. Any other questions? Well, hey, that brings us to the end of our agenda. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.